joining us now for more is Nitsana Darshan Leitner, Israeli attorney and founder and president of Shurat Hadin, the Israel Law Center. And she's speaking to us from Tel Aviv. Thanks for joining us again, Nitsana. Well, let's start by asking uh, how you think this change uh, in the chief prosecutor's role uh, could impact on these the potential of a uh, war crimes investigation into potential war crimes by Israel and the Palestinians. Let's start by focusing on the departure of Fatou Ben Souda, just the fact that she will not be in that role. Well, these are the good news. Uh, Fatou Ben Souda is uh, known as someone that uh, encouraged the Palestinians to start this whole move in the International Criminal Court. Um, in back then, in 2012, uh, she recommended them to become a, a we call, um, preserving a, a state. I'm sorry. Uh, observant state in the UN in order to sign the Rome Treaty and to become a member in the International Criminal Court based on the preliminary decision given by her, uh, by the former prosecutor. So she was um, keen to uh, take the uh, situation in Palestine and uh, investigate it. Um, so now we're going to go and see what will be uh, the continuation of this uh, well, decision. Well, let me ask, okay, so now let's look at the continuation. Uh, there, was, there have been some media reports uh, of Israeli officials being cited anonymously saying that they see Karim Khan as uh, more pragmatic than Ben Souda, uh, maybe someone less prone to sort of politicizing that role or uh, prone to political pressure. Uh, do you have uh, that, any kind of impression? Is that is that maybe or uh, maybe bad a little for, maybe a, a sort of an optimistic spin on the part of Israeli officials? I'll tell you quite frankly, the optimism in this case based on the fact that uh, he, as opposed to the other candidate, will take office. The other candidate, hundred percent, would have been horrible for Israel. Um, yeah, Frugal Gaynor, he's. Uh, he was working, this is the other candidate who was not uh, elected. Uh, he was involved with representing the Palestinians. Back then in the beginning, he was representing Palestinians, uh, uh, victims. Um, he was, uh, um, could have been very bad uh, for Israel. Um, he was uh, a prosecutor in uh, Cambodia. He was uh, involved in the Kosovo affairs. And, uh, and he has uh, uh, personal uh, involvement in the Palestinian uh, case. So the fact that he was not elected by the other one, Arib Khan, um, makes the Israelis um, a little bit uh, to a breeze. We don't know, though. We don't know uh, if uh, Khan will continue or will not continue with this investigation against Israel. Uh, we don't know how conservative he is. He's much better than the than Geiner, but we still uh, don't know what he's going to do. Right. Now, I want to focus on uh, some reports that came out of the process. This was apparently the first time, uh, of course, the, it's, it, this is a vote by members, the member states, uh, the, Rome, the signatories uh, to the Rome statue that get to decide this. Apparently, this was the first time there was a secret ballot to choose uh, the chief prosecutor. There are also reports that because this was all done virtually, you don't, you, there was not uh, some of the political trade-offs that apparently went on, they said, in the corridors there at the ICC in The Hague, or perhaps underscoring the political nature of the ICC, that this is essentially a political body. 100%. Unfortunately, this is what the ICC is. And we see from the way they elect the prosecutor that it's all based on political decision, political considerations, um, political allies uh, in countries and uh, benefits that these countries will get. The, uh, the uh, establishing of the court uh, was uh, well intended. They wanted to create a court that will take care of uh, catastrophes around the world that there is nobody to investigate. However, uh, already from the beginning, the United States, 
you know, leads to Israel realize that the course will be political. How do they realize that? Based on the regulations that the uh, different countries wanted to impose on the court, based on the crimes that these countries wanted to insert into their own treaty, um, suddenly, you know, taking um, um, occupying territories uh, became a, a war crime. Um, Unrelated situations became crimes against humanity. And uh, this whole attitude brought the United States and Israel to realize that this is going to be a political court. And once it becomes a political institution, nobody has any control over it. Now we can see from the recent decision of the court to investigate Israel, despite the fact that Israel is not a member in the court, despite the fact that even uh, the Palestine Authority is not a state, does not recognize as a state according to the international law, yet the court decided that they have jurisdiction to go and to investigate the situation in Palestine. You can tell that this is a political court, the same way they decided to investigate the United States over what their soldiers did in Afghanistan, despite the fact that the United States is not a member in the court. So is it political body right. run by political officials and controlled by political states? Right. All right. Well, we'll have to see, though, if Karim Khan will bring some difference uh, to his role here uh, compared to that of okay. his of his okay. predecessor. Nitsana Darshan-Leitner, thank you for joining us. Shurat Hadin, thank you for joining us on I-24 News.